should know by now, I'm Devin Dykes, Ogallala, Nebraska born, Rushville, Nebraska raised. And I got the topic of if a D1 player is automatically better than a D2 player in college sports. In the world of college sports, what determines if you go to a school like UNL or to a school like CSC is only a second difference, uh, maybe a pound less in a bench max, and that's it. <laughs> this small. <laughs> Some of those lucky people who end up being faster get through that extra second, get through that extra pound of benching max, and end up going to D1 schools, sometimes end up not having too much of a career at all, either because they get injured a lot, or they just get too big headed, get in trouble and thrown to jail like Lawrence Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what well, with that, some D2 school players end up having stellar careers and end up doing well in the prosy. A good example of this is Danny Woodhead. So the question is, if D1 players are really automatically better than D2 players, through three points, I'll explain why that a D1 player is not automatically better than a D2 player. To start off with, I'll, let's look at what times you have to have to get to it to get a D1 scholarship. For all linemen, it is 5.1 and a 40 yard dash. For QBs, it's a 4.6. And for D linemen, it's 4.8. According to a short article from Sports Illustrated dated January 20th, 2012, only 1% of high school players go on to play college ball. And only 1% of those go on to schools like UNF. Which brings me to my next point. Sometimes those who make, make it the D1 schools start getting big headed and lose track of what they did to get over there in the first place. A good example of this is Dwayne The Rock Johnson, the guy who makes movies with little kids now. <laughs> <laughs> and wore some spandex the fake wrestling. <laughs> he went on to play at the University of Miami. <laughs> Things were good for the first few weeks of training camp his freshman year, but then he got injured in a scrimmage, and so he ended up redshirting. The next year, seems like things were going well again, and then, bam, re-injured that same thing and kept bugging him time and time and again. The reason for this is because he overtrained and he also then stretched properly like you're supposed to do. <laughs> he ended up not doing a thing at Miami. He tried to save his football career by going up to Canada and playing for the Stampeders. And guess what? Injured again. <laughs> and then he took up the spandex tights and fake wrestled. And then went on to be an actor. My God. <laughs> but he's not the only one, though. According to an article from Sporting News dated February 1st, 2012, around the National Signing Day, only 5% of players who went to Division I schools end up, end up actually doing any, anything worthwhile at those schools. Finally, let's look at the D2 players. D2 players, unlike D1 players, only usually end up in schools with the best facilities that could possibly make them stronger, faster, quicker. They tend to be a little more humble than D1 players and work harder because they feel like they got a raw deal from not offered a scholarship from a D1 school. And so they go on and try to show those D1 schools like Oklahoma, Texas, <laughs> Miami, Florida State, 
in Alabama. <laughs> what they missed out on. A good example of this is yet again Danny Woodhead. In the mid-2000s, coming out of North Platte High School, he was one of the best Class A players in the state and one of the best overall players in the state of Nebraska. He went through that 40-yard dash and the benching and all that. And he did well at just about every one of those. He had the speed, he could take a pounding from defenders, and had the agility. But only one D1 school offered him anything, and that was a walk-on. And so, instead of going to UNL, he went on to CSC, the only one who would offer him any chance. The reason why UNL only wanted him as a walk-on, or not care about having him at all, is because he's only 5'7". It's about like, uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> the size of a sixth grader. <laughs> He went on to CSC and ended up owning the all-time, all NCAA, not just Division II, but D1A, D1AA, D2, and D3, all-time career rushing yards. Rushed more than anyone else. Now he plays for probably the best team in the past dozen years. All these Super Bowl contenders and next year's champs. <laughs> the New England Patriots. Watch out, Ravens. <laughs> so are the D1 players automatically better than D2 players? After going through my points, it is clear that that is a huge myth, and you should not buy into that crap whatsoever. <laughs> and to a certain extent, D2 players might be a bit better than some of those high pedestal Division One players. Talking to you, Lawrence Phillips. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.